All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? God bless you. I'm going to dive right into this Real Talk video, and I'm going to answer some questions from my um, George Zimmerman video and the Trayvon Martin thing. And um, first of all, let me say this before I get started. Because a lot of people are always sitting up talking about, oh, yeah, I fear you. I've been through this. I've been through that. Let me tell you something. If you have never feared for your life, been put at gunpoint, followed, then it's hard for you to understand why a person would do all they can to save their life. Now I'm saying it to all these people that's talking and leaving all these stupid comments, you know, crazy stuff. My title of this video says, I have been followed and put at gunpoint by the police. Now, this is real what I'm talking about. See, some of y'all don't think I'm lying. I talked about this a long time ago on here, and I just mentioned a little bit of this in a video a couple of days ago. And I know how it feels to be shot at. I know how it feels once again to be followed. I know how it feels to look down the barrel of a gun for what? Being black. Now, I'm not making this no racial type of video in no kind of way. I'm just talking about my personal experience. See, I done had a whole lot of things happen to me. This is why I talk about it. And if I can say anything to help anybody else. Now, I just told y'all about this not too long ago. One night, I was coming back from church with my little brother in the car. Now, notice I'm saying I came back from church and this racial, racist, let me say it like that, a racist cop pulls me over. Now, once again, I don't have no problem with color. Even to this day, I wasn't brought up to hate. I love white people, it don't matter what the color is. I was stopped by a racist police officer who said that I look suspicious. Asked me, did I have any weapons in my car? Thinking I'm somebody else. Not once told me why he pulled me over. It's so dark outside. And we got into an altercation. Now, when you fear for your life, first of all, I'm talking about a police officer. In Trayvon Martin's situation, we talking about a neighborhood watch man, a wannabe cop. I'm talking about an actual police officer who told me to step out of my car and without even giving me a second, I put my hand on the door to step out of the car. I tell y'all this, he's, he, he grabs my arm, flips my arm up in my back where all this is hurting. So my, this arm is jammed. But a man reflex is so, so fast. We, ain't, we, we are liable to do anything without even thinking a lot of time because of our reflex. Now, all I can think about was this cop killing me, shooting me. Just as I had just saw the other incident, I think it was might have been up in L.A. when this cop shot this, this, this um, young guy and killed him. Didn't have, didn't have nothing, just like me, unarmed, didn't have no drugs, no nothing, but registration, insurance on the car. Never told me why he stopped me. And when he grabbed my arm, this arm right here was still free. Me fearing for my life, you know what I did? I stiffed on that police officer so hard. Now, if I would have kept on going toward, because once I stiffed on him, he stumbled. Now, I could have easily got on top of that cop and beat the hell out of him. Oh, yeah. And see, this is, the, this is the part I want to make. If somebody is beating the hell out of you, it's hard for you to get to your weapon, especially if your head is going back and you getting beat down. And if the one on top of you is getting the best of you, it's going to be kind of hard to get to your weapon. See, police officers got a lot of stuff on them. But see, what I did, I shoved him, and then I stood back, which gave him time 
to draw his gun out on me. Now, if I wanted to just, just beat him up till he was dead, I could have done that. My point is, when you fear for your life, you're going to fight and do anything you got to do to save yourself. Now, me knowing that I have done nothing wrong, police officer had no reason to stop me, had no warrant to search my car. I'm talking about a police officer. See, this is the stuff that don't make sense to me in that trial. I have been times where I was walking and minding my business at night, stopped by the cops. Stopped while I'm walking on feet because I don't look right. See, there's too many things in this in this case that don't don't add up. It don't add up at all. And then if you shoot somebody, and then you don't even go into detail talking about how you was able to pull out your gun, something ain't right. Something ain't right at all. It's a lot of leaks in that Zimmerman and, and Trayvon Martin's case. Sad thing is we got a, 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 a young man that's gone. And I, I just love the way his parents, they... I know it ain't nothing it ain't nothing but God doing that. The way they stand come and doing it the godly way. They even told black people, do not start no riots. We already got some few riots going on and burnt they done already burnt up a few things. It's gonna get worse. But look at this. These parents, they done lost their they baby. And they telling black folks pretty much don't act ignorant. Don't do nothing. I have been put in this situation so much. That's why I just did the other video talking about because of the color of my skin. Now we can sit up and act like racism done left this world, but let's be real, y'all. It ain't never left. All that cop had to do that night on me when he drew back his gun he could have pulled his gun out. He did pull his gun out, excuse me. He could have shot me. Because if you hit a cop, that's automatically time in prison. Now, I didn't hit him with an open fist, but I hit him with my palm. I stiff-armed him. And I should have been gone for that. But see, God had his hand on that. See, my mom and dad, they able to still see me. I'm still here. I'm still breathing. I'm alive. But what about Trayvon Martin parents? You can't pay back that life. And my heart goes out. That's why it's no justice at all. So I'm talking from what I've went through and experienced on, on having a gun drawn on me from a cop. Two o'clock in the morning. No witnesses around at all. So you can say what you want to say when there's nobody around. Sad thing is Trayvon didn't even get a chance to tell his side of the story. So George Zimmerman can pretty much say anything he wanted to say. In a white jury. Hmm. Now, now, like I say, y'all, I'm not racist at all. But I am a realist. I understand there's still some folks out here that hate black people. It's stand your ground stuff. See, I feared for my life that night. Y'all think I'm lying ass, Lil JT. Lil JT is my witness. He was right in the car with me. He saw the whole thing. They even went on that side of the car and tried to mess with him. Ask me, what was I doing that night, that time of night, and where was I coming from? And I don't stay nowhere near my church. We was coming back. It was. It, was, it had to be about two in the morning. You know how you, you musicians. You know we like to sit around sometime and just jam in the church. We lose track of time. I came home late. Man, want to look all in my car. And the, and the words that came out of his mouth. And you know what he told me, as I quoted, just like he said. He said, "I will shoot your black ass right here, right now." As he handcuffed me, threw me on the back of my car, and at that time, had the gun still in my back. 
And all I could think of was that gun going off. See, I got a chance to live and tell a story. Whole lot of youngsters didn't. Whole lot of people right now, grown men, young men, are dead behind getting shot in the back behind cops. It's a lot of dirty cops out here, but it's also a lot of good cops out here. And that night I will never forget because that's the night that made me really realize how messed up this system is, how crooked these cops is, how you can pretty much do anything and get away with it. So I said all that to say this. If I was out there just like Trayvon Martin, minding my business, doing nothing wrong, unarmed, I ain't on no drugs, I'm just simply going to the store. And here comes a man out of nowhere following me. Oh, I'm going to wonder the same thing. What you following me for? Did I do something wrong? And you got a gun? You come, you come looking for trouble, and you ain't even a cop. I would have been, y'all, y'all, y'all just got to forgive me when I say this. Because I got to say this like I want. If that would have been me out there too, and George Zimmerman would have came up to me with a gun, and I'm fearing for my life, we get to Tussman, I would have beat the shit out of George Zimmerman. I'm just being real, y'all. This ain't no, this ain't no Bible video here. I would have beat the shit out of George Zimmerman, fearing for my life. Now, I ain't going to say I would have killed him, but I would have gave him a hell of a wake-up call to get the hell up off of me. And if somebody got a gun on you, see, if you ain't never had a gun held to you, or somebody trying to stab you with a knife, you ain't going to fear me in this video. If somebody got a gun on you, you going to do everything you can. Most of us are going to freeze up. Because all you can think about is that trigger getting pulled. But see, we got a lot of fight in us. And we going to do whatever we got. As I'm reminded of my my buddy Mike Frazier, surviving the storm. A lot of y'all know Mike Frazier when he was carjacked by them two youngsters that had him at gunpoint, and he grabbed the gun. Mike lived to tell the story. He grabbed the gun. See, without even thinking, 15 minutes out of our lives, man, our reflexes, and without even thinking, we liable to do something, and we don't even think about it until we done it. I can't believe I grabbed that gun. What was I thinking about? You was thinking about saving your life. It was either going to be you or him. I would have beat the shit out of George Zimmerman. Then I would have called the police. Man wanted to kill that boy. Excuse me, I don't like to say boy, young man. He wanted to kill that young man that night. And I don't care about all this other stuff. People is talking about it wasn't no this and wasn't no that man. The bottom line is he should have never been messing with that young boy. And we look at this law. So I don't know about y'all. If you if you ever been in a situation like me, or uh, been been followed and been been put at gunpoint by police when you are innocent and you fear for your life, like I say, in my situation, I just I stiffed on the cop. This is a true story, y'all. What, three, four years ago? I feared for my life. And it was it was like it was either going to be him or me. I didn't give a damn about him having a badge on. I I really didn't even care about him having a gun at first. Till I, till I felt that gun on me. That gave me a wake-up call. I said, JT, you better settle down, Doc. And he still could have shot me. It could have made up any kind of lie. He could have shot me. He could have took his own fist, bust his own nose, slammed his own head on the concrete, and said it was self-defense. That might. Could have took my hand, put it on the gun. See, it's too much that can happen. So I'm talking from what I've went through, not by what I heard. I done been, I done been there. I done been there. I done been wrongly accused. I done been through this old crooked system that they call justice. Ain't no justice. And don't tell me everybody in this 
in these court systems is right because that, all of them ain't right. When it comes down to it, it's all about money. If you done been through the system, PP drawings, I know you know what I'm talking about, brother. We done, we done talked about this before. Yeah, if I'd have been fair for my life, yeah. The, the real self-defense ain't, ain't being brought up. I wish, I wish it would have went down another way and Trayvon could still be here. I pray for his family. I, I'm praying that these these riots and things don't get so hard out of hand because it ain't going to come down to nothing but more people getting killed. So I just want to lay this on y'all, you know, to come back to finish answering those other questions. Y'all know who y'all are. As a matter of fact, while I'm thinking about this, look at this. I don't know if y'all been keeping up in Jacksonville, Florida. Look at, um, what's, what's that young lady name? Uh, Marissa Alexander. Go pull up Marissa Alexander case. This woman then got sentenced to 20 years in prison. Fearing for her life from firing warning shots. Firing warning shots in the wall. She didn't hurt nobody. She feared for her life. And that old crazy baby daddy, he admits to hitting on her. He got five, five, what is it, five baby mamas. And he already said he doesn't put his hands on all of them pretty much. And he doesn't put his hands on her. So this woman fears for her life. She shoots warning shots in there to the wall. And check this out. This woman ain't never been in trouble with the law, not a day in her life. She got three kids. And I think one of them, a newborn, something like that. Ain't no justice for her. She didn't even kill nobody. And she got 20 years in prison. Zimmerman kills Trayvon and walks. And this woman, once again, she's a black woman. So to stand your ground, why it didn't work for her? It didn't even work at all. She didn't even kill nobody, shoots through the wall. Her stand your ground defense was denied. They rejected it, they rejected her, and now they're giving her 20 years in prison behind protecting herself. Now, I guess the system, what I guess what they wanted to happen was this man to go on, put his hands on her once again and beat her till she dead. This is the problem with these old crooked systems. They always want to wait till somebody dead to try to start changing up stuff. How many more people got to get killed? For you figure out these old stupid laws you got ain't worth nothing. Stand your ground can work for George Zimmerman. Oh, but to this lady here who didn't even kill nobody. She protecting herself. Shoots through the wall, warning. I wish George Zimmerman would have shot a warning shot in her. I wish George Zimmerman would have just called the police and, and been like, just come check it out. This man, you know, he uh, he don't look right to me, but I'm not going to mess with him. I'm going to call the police because I'm not no cop. I wish he would have done that. Poor Trayvon just going to the store. I wish that night Trayvon just would have decided to go to another store. Or just would have stayed where he was at. But see, all these our wishes ain't going to do no good. Guy asked me on the question, asked me a question on the video yesterday. Man, we got to do something. Prayer ain't enough. What the hell are you going to do? Protest? Complain? Do some old rides? What you going to do that ain't already been done? You better just realize this is the way it is. And it ain't going to be no peace, once again, until Christ returns. I don't, I don't care how many people you go round up and get together. How many marches you want to have. It's still going to be the same way. More people going to get off for murder. To me, George Zimmerman was a cold-blooded murderer. You know what? 
he got to deal with that the rest of his life. He going to be looking over his shoulders the rest of his life. Because, see, don't think it's over. And I'm not no prophet or nothing. I'm a realist. I face what's real. But if somebody catch him in the wrong place, they'll take him out. So he need all the protection he can get. As I think about Trayvon and them mommy and daddy. They got to go home every night. And realize. Their baby boy ain't coming back. George Zimmer's parents, they still see him. He go home. He got it made in the shade, sipping lemonade. We used to say back in the day. They got a... Trayvon and them got a, and parents got to look and realize that my son is gone. 17 years he was allowed to be here. And some fool want to play cop that night, make assumptions, takes his life. See, I'm saying it's because the same thing could happen to me. That police officer could have shot me out there. I mean, I, I'm not talking about no little hit, y'all. I cocked back. Because when he swung, he swung me around. And when he swung me around, I had all the power in his right hand. And I just, bam, I'm talking about right in his head. I shoved him just like that real hard. See, he knew he couldn't whoop me. I think I even told him, put your gun down. Somebody said, uh, what, what, was it? What, what you got without that badge and that gun? So I brought up from the streets. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing for me to fight. It still ain't nothing for me to fight. And whatever I gotta do to protect myself, that's what I'm gonna do. See, y'all, y'all, y'all. Oh, you're a Christian. You, you shouldn't be fighting. That. Yeah, yeah. That's your belief. I tell you, I'm a true believer. I believe in the Bible, but I believe in some, I, I believe in that Smith and Weston also. I believe in Ruger. Oh yes. I believe in 9mm, I believe in 45, I believe in shotgun. You Just cause you don't, don't, don't try to make me do what you do. I done had my house broken in twice. One time while I was in there. So I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to protect. Cause you see, if somebody bold enough to break in your house, they bold enough to take your life. And once again, when you, when you are in fear of your life being in danger, you're going to do whatever you got to do to save your family, to save yourself. See, we don't really all know what went down out there. But see, like I'm talking about in my situation, my little brother was my witness. I never once saw this cop again. Not once. Had me handcuffed and said, well, take... And was about to take me to jail because he thought I was somebody else. So don't tell me we got justice. It's just us. God bless you. God keep you. Peace.